Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm going to record a quick painting. It might take about 40 minutes, 45, maybe less, but um, we'll see how it goes. The, the preparation is always the, the key, mixing your colour to start with, but uh, I'll get to that. Right, this is the, uh, oh gosh, this is the photograph I'm going to be using. Um, I use this quite a lot because I just absolutely love this dramatic sky, but using it as a, in a black and white format is brilliant because it allows you then to put your interpretation onto it. So that's my inspiration, so I'll pop that over there for the moment. Uh, before we start, just run a few things by you. That is that I'm using a um, an SAA Sable Kalinsky brush. If I bring that up, you can probably see it's a size 14 and it's, um, let's say, Sable, which is beautiful from a company called SAA. Anyway, there we go. That's what I'm using. I've got four, well, I'm telling the fib, I've got three sheets of folded up tissue kitchen paper this one is not my favorite it's just it just happened to be on offer at the moment but it's, it's too highly embossed so you have to be a bit mindful of that when you use it because it will leave imprints onto your painting but uh, I have those ready and I always fold them um, purely because they're then it's a, it's a nice dense piece of tissue to work into if you need to wipe off your your um, brush okay pop those to the side and in my radial wheel palette I have got mixed up a grey now the greys seem to take a while to mix but basically it is a combination of ultramarine then uh, cerulean or cobalt either way is for, is fine whatever one you want to use um, then I add opera rose so that I get to a purple which um, is just lovely then I kind of ruin it by adding raw sienna I choose to use raw sienna instead of uh, yellow ochre, mostly because it, it has uh, less tendency to go a bit green. So raw sienna is preferred. So you get to kind of a sludge. If that happens, just add more of your ultramarine and you'll find you'll get to the place you want to be for your grey. Now, because you've added a, a, a number of colours, what you must do is each time you want to use this pigment is give it a bit of a stir. Otherwise, it just all separates and sediments and um, you don't get the true colour that you've mixed. With that, I've done another mix, which is uh, this one, which is a, a good brushful of the lighter grey, and I've added indigo to this one, so I've got a, a dark as well. So this painting, as I say, is going to be pretty monochromatic and quite uh, dramatic, but it's going to be a great, great fun. Um, I've got a, a sheet of paper that is, I've used sellotape around the edges to uh, mask it out, give you that edge for when your framer needs somewhere to Put his edges to to the, put the mount board to. Um, I left a gap here. This is I often do this in my paintings because it allows me to just test pigments as I'm going along. May or may not do that. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, and um, well, I'm about to get on with it really. So I've got some water, which will be slightly, maybe not. It's going to say slightly off screen, but maybe not. So I'll put it slightly to the side. And here we go. So. To start with, I'm going to wet a few areas that are going to indicate where these lighter areas are in the sky. So if I just get that done to start with, so literally just splodging some water around in a few places. Very technical term, that splodging. Um, I just love the shape in this sky, it's just amazing. Coming down here, put some of that water in to keep that light area there. And here, what I have to remember, of course, is there's a little bit of land at the bottom. <laughs> Could have seen me forgetting that, but I mean, there we go. So pop that in, and that goes right to the corner over there. Now, I'm going to use one of the other colours that I mentioned but haven't mixed, and that is a little bit of the cerulean on its own. And that's going to go into the sky in the top left hand corner. So place that there. So we'll keep that quite sort of cheerful amongst all of this other more dramatic sky. I'm going to put a little bit over here as well. Now the beauty of using a video is of course you can stop it at any time should you wish to and then replay and um, you know keep pausing and catching up and carrying on. I'm thinking I might just put a little bit of the raw sienna I don't know if you can see this. Oh, actually, I'll do it down here. I'll just put a little bit there. That's far too strong, so I don't want that. Taking a lot of it off my brush, putting a bit of water to it. Yeah, just getting a very pale colour. And add that in a few of these places into the wetted area. I'm really being quite delicate with my touch. A little bit there. 
I think some into this lighter area here. You should, although I'm touching into the cerulean, you should be able to do that because it's, um, as I say, shouldn't uh, go green. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. We'll put that across there. And I'm going to do my usual sort of swoop across because it looks a bit more exciting to do. And indeed it is. Right, and on that note, I'm going to quickly, I've just picked up a quite a strong dollop of raw sienna, as you can see. So I'm going to pop that under the, the land. And there we go. Leave that there for a second. Just cleaning my brush. Pop my palette down. And this is where this tissue comes in handy. I normally have an old towel to the side of me, as you all know. But I haven't <laughs> at the minute, so there we go. And whilst I'm at it, I want to clean my edges. Just a quick reminder why I clean these edges. Um, first and foremost, it messes with your perception of how your painting is moving forward. So it just helps to keep those edges nice and clean. And whilst I'm doing that, I can see that I need to soften this edge. Now, when I'm softening an edge, I have a clean brush, um, but it's damp. And I don't go into the pigment. I go to the side of it and then just tickle the edge. That way, that pigment that you're trying to soften the edge of has somewhere to move around. It's got somewhere to go, basically. Just clean that edge again. Right, gonna get the grey now. I said this would probably take 45 minutes or more. Huh, it's probably going to be a 20 minute demo, but there we go. Right, so definitely need to give that a stir. Now I need to just drop some of that pigment into these. I'm being ever so gentle. If you could feel how it's, it's like I'm trying to tickle somebody. <laughs> I'm not, but you know. <laughs> anyway, so dropping that beautiful grey that I've mixed into the uh, wetted areas and those blue areas. Uh, leaving a white gap there. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to pop a little bit over here as well. Some of these areas are, are very wet still, which is great. As long as the pigments on the paper are wet, they are viable, which means you can keep moving into them. There, I'm just checking the photograph where I'm going next. Just putting a little bit in there. I can see that area's gone a little bit dry, so I'm just going to get a brush and activate those a little bit very carefully. As I was saying just now about softening those edges, just if you're very careful about it, you should be able to get away with it. I don't know who's going to tell you off. I'm saying you're going to get away with it. Huh. No one is going to tell you off. <laughs> it's just basically um, that you can actually get away with putting those colours back in there. Dropping a bit more pigment in there. That seemed to be a bit, a bit pale. Right, and I'm going to add the tiniest little bit here. My pigment is quite fluid, actually. A little bit more fluid than I wanted. That's absolutely fine because this is what we can do. If we tip the pad, you can help those pigments travel and get more interesting marks. I'm going to do a quick clean up again. I'm going to gather that little bit of pigment there. It's probably going to be a bit too strong, so I'm going to remove it. As long as you just go slightly to the edge, you can get away with this. Okay. I'm just going to bring a little bit of water into there and soften those edges as well. And because you've mixed several colours, you can see it starts to split, which is just beautiful. All right, keeping these ed edges viable. Oh, we've got some holes. Mm hmm. Not required. There we go. Easily dealt with. Right, now it gets quite dramatic. As in, really dramatic. Mind you, that's a really lovely sky. Oh, I thought that was a bit of fluff. It was a blob. Yeah, never mind. So now I'm going to the stronger colour. Again, this is rather fluid, but let's give it a go. So give it a stir. Just as a quick reminder, this was all, all of the colours I mixed, all four colours to make the grey, and then I added indigo to it to make it darker. So what I want to do is get some really powerful pigment into here. Oh, isn't that just amazing? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's just gorgeous. 
mean my blobbing is fine. <laughs> Pop a little bit in here as well. Make some down here. And going back to doing that tipping, I'll just move that little bit off. That might just be a bit too much pigment. Look at this one having fun running around. Never panic. We can deal with it. We'll just move it around. I'm using Saunders Waterford paper, which is beautiful to work on. 100% cotton. It um, allows you to work wet into wet. Went slightly quiet there, didn't I? It's because I was thinking, oh, look at those bits wandering around. I'm just keeping these areas wet here that um, I'd like some of that pigment to move around a little bit. But I'm not a great fan of these bits here, so sort those out very gently with your brush. This is the beauty of using a sable because it is gentle but also holds quite a bit of pigment and so it depends on how much pressure you put onto the brush as to how much pigment you release. There we go. There's a bit of a puddle there which I might just try and move or I might leave it there for a minute. I don't know, let's have a look. <laughs> Then I'll leave it and then I get back in there. Right. So, if only it dried like that. It's going to dry lighter, but we'll have to see how that goes. What I want to do now is, is go into the land. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it's much darker down here. So, what I need to do is to mix up some stronger pigment. Ideally, I should allow, allow it to dry. I love that little bit up there. I'll just put my fingers in. So that's really very nice. So what I'm going to do is go into the darker pigment. There's, there's less pigment there, so I can work with that quicker. And I'm going to add some more cerulean. I think I need to get myself some more in my palette. It's running out. A little bit more of the ultramarine. And I think I've just picked up a rather a lot of ultramarine. <laughs> There we go, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Lovely knot. So I'm going to swap palettes because I've gone too mad, too quickly. Into that one. Oh, and look what I've just done. Now I'm not to worry. We'll just have a bit more blue in the sky there. So just get a bit more of the pink going on. So basically I'm mixing that grey that I had to start with. Um, which you're getting to see. It's not quite as bad as watching paint dry, but almost. <laughs> Just cleaning my brush. I'm going to take a lot of the moisture off because I need to pick up some of the raw sienna now. And if I've got too much water on my brush, I'll end up with a very diluted pigment again, which is what, not what I'm after. I'm after a really sort of strong pigment. There we are, so we're getting there. And what I need to do is add some indigo to it to make it a lot, lot darker. There we go. Right, let's have a look what's happening with this painting. In the meantime, whilst I've been mixing paint, I'm just going to move those pigments around again. I think they've blended beautifully. If you could see me, I'm tipping this paper and I'm tipping my head the same way. <laughs> Not lady, don't need to do that. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Bold and daring. I've got the thick dark grey that I've mixed again to make sure it's all going in the right directions. And I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use my flat brush. I absolutely love this brush. It's, um, it's a proline, very old. It's a proline uh, nylon flat, which I haven't cleaned very well, I can feel. <laughs> right. Loading that up with the pigment, and I'm going to do a, a very bold mark coming across here. And it's going to suggest our land. I can see it's starting to fuzz a little bit. Well, that's fine. I'll deal with that by using some of this tissue that I'd folded earlier. Just simply place it there and create a ridge so that you're preventing the pigment from 
going any further. I remember I said to you about this paper being very embossed. It's left a couple of marks, <laughs> which are not desired. Didn't go into those again. If I can see where I'm going. There. And what I'll do is I'll use this nylon, no, sorry, sable, just to soften those edges again, because I don't want that embossed paper showing in my painting. Don't want it at all. Right, whilst I've got this brush damp, I'm just taking off as much as I can, I'm going to now just do a few lines into that area that I've just painted so that you're creating some distant marks. It might be a bit too wet and they might just blend over, but that's okay. You see, I'm still having fun running around. Well, it's not allowed. So I'll lift that out again. But this time, as I say, with a, my damp sable, it should work much better. If I wanted to, I could stop and dry it, but if I, if I do that, um, you're going to get deafened. So I'd rather not. So I need a little bit more colour. That's still not quite strong enough. If you look at the photograph, this needs to be stronger. It gives that differentiation between the sky and the land. So I'm going to give that just a moment and then I'm going to add some even more stronger colour. But in fact, if I put it onto here, if you can see me, yep, you can see that. Right, so that's some of the very strong colour. And into that, I'm going to add some raw sienna to warm it up on one side. And then the opera rose on the other side. So we've got two, two colours going on, or two shades of that grey. Oh, yeah. How many shades of grey is it in that book? <laughs> and now I should be able to go in again. A bit more of that grey in it. Just add a little bit of extra strength in a couple of places. I'm going to go with a purpley colour over here very carefully. It's interesting, when I'm doing something that's sort of delicate, I talk more quietly. <laughs> crazy woman. Anyway, here we go. Just changing the colours around a little bit. Now you could do a lot more in the um, foreground, but I'm going to leave it for now. And I feel that there's a problem here. Now this is just literally, it's a back run. Can you see that? If I bring that up, can you see this area where there's a, the pigment has had, has run back so that's easily rectified. So if I get my brush, hopefully as clean as possible, now I've taken most of the moisture off it and uh, just very delicately tickle over that edge. You should be able to remove most of those lines. Um, I am using opaque colours though, so they it tend to lift. So do be very careful, I'm being very gentle. Otherwise all that will happen is I'll create even more lines. There you are, that's better than it was. And one last thing, I've taken to using watercolour pencils. I absolutely love these. Um, I don't draw with them, but what I do is I add additional marks to them. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of marks into this painting with, um, I've got a purple, and what other colour should I have? I could do with a greeny colour, which I don't seem to have. Never mind, I'll go with the blue, which actually needs sharpening. Right, these are Faber-Castell. Um, watercolour pencils, they are gorgeous. And what I do is I dunk them into the water, the lead as it were, and I've got a bit of purple there. So make sure it doesn't, it'll come out very strong if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna do a very gentle mark. So you can do a few drawn lines over the paper. Sometimes they're a bit strong, as you can see, and other times they're just about right. I do like a few sort of like little marks like that. And the blue one, I'm going to do just one or two marks on this. I'll go over that one. But if they they have come out quite strong, so what I'm going to do is go in with some tissue and just dab that out a little, and leave even more marks from the tissue. Uh, never mind. Go back in over it very gently and soften them a little bit. that mark looks a bit strong doesn't it? 
and so never worry just go back in and then I can put a little bit more of that dark just underneath it maybe to diffuse it right and there we have it just clean the edges how to paint a fairly dramatic more monochromatic dramatic <laughs> skyscape what I'll do is in the notes for this little video, I'll write down all of the colours I've used. I'll write the um, recipe, as I call it, for mixing the grey. And um, basically, folks, have some fun. Okay, bye for now.